everyone. You're watching We Heart Therapy, the special series EFT Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Bell, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified EFT supervisor and therapist here in fabulous Las Vegas. And hope you guys have been staying tuned to the We Heart Therapy channel. Lots of wonderful um, additions coming and new episodes. And as well, We Heart Therapy is now running retreats for both therapists and clients under the banner of We Heart Therapy. You've probably been to some of my events under Southern Nevada EFT, but now you get a chance to come to a We Heart Therapy retreat. And our first one will be summer camp for therapists in Mexico. So make sure you check out weheartherapy.com. And don't forget to check out my book on Amazon, uh, Using Relentless Empathy in the Therapeutic Relationship. Just Google Annabelle Bugatti on Amazon. So without further ado, I am extremely excited to welcome back two extraordinary therapists and EFT trainers who hail to us all the way from across the ocean and another continent. So we have Levin Migarod, and again, sorry for my American butchery, <laughs> I, I'm not so good at accents, and Jeff Sloopmakers, who both are our EFT trainers in Belgium, and they run the EFT center out there, and uh, they teach EFT trainings in Dutch, which is super amazing, and they speak uh, multiple languages, which is awesome. And they're going to be coming to Las Vegas in 2024 to uh, host a training. So we're extremely excited to have them back on our show. They have done two prior, at least two prior episodes, maybe even more. So make sure you check those out. But um, I'm so excited to have you guys back today. And hey, what are we going to be talking about today? We are talking about working with anger as a form of trauma which is super intriguing and caught my eye during a training with these two wonderful gentlemen who specialize in working with inner partner violence, domestic violence, um, and anger, of course, we know is an emotion that tends to come along with violence. So guys, thank you again so much. And if you guys want to start us off with maybe an idea of what we mean when we talk about anger and trauma through the attachment relational lens? Yeah, that's a good idea. And I, can I say goedenavond or goedemorgen, depending on where you are. Good morning and good evening in, in Dutch. And bonsoir, uh, uh, good, bonjour, if you want it in French. Bonjour the, in Italian. Buongiorno, buonasera in Italian. So we can Hola do... in Spanish. <sighs> in Spanish, hola. Morron in Swedish. Good quell in Swedish. We can say in many languages. The... Hello I'm to there. all of our EFT peeps and all. Hello to all EFT people. So <sighs> if you are going to talk about anger, we first realize that anger is a very common emotion that we all know. And it's very much attached to, to attachment and to relationships. Because the, the first way we know anger is when we are babies, when we protest the lack of connection. And then we have this anger that develops in us just to try to reconnect with others. And we also have the anger of the baby that says, enough kisses, mama, enough kisses, mama, leave me alone. I don't want to eat anymore, too much, too much. And the baby says, stop take distance, take this. So both these are anger that are very much connected to the attachment meaning. And another uh, point I want to make maybe is that if you have primary anger, primary anger is the anger that says, here starts my integrity, stay out of here. The, the thing I always think of is if you see the Lord of the Rings, in the second film, Gandalf is standing on the bridge and the monster is coming and Gandalf says, thou shall not pass, puff. And that is the anger that protects the integrity. Mm. Yeah, that's the yeah. primary anger. So like Mostly, anger as an advocator, basically. Sorry? Like anger as an advocator for ourselves. Yeah, I think I get that. It's <laughs> It says, it's, it says, 
I want to protect myself and I worked it and I, I say, this is my border. And we know all that, that that's important in social relationships. Mm -hmm. But mostly in EFT, we know secondary anger. That's when the relationship goes bad, we get too distanced, then we get back to this anger of the person in the pursuing po position that starts blaming and says you and you are never there. And But finally, he or she says, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm afraid of losing you. It is this one is secondary because there's fear under it, and that shows in anger. While in the Gandalf anger, it's mm. primary Gandalf anger that protects yourself. And then there's the other anger of the person in the distance position that says, uh, says that you're you're too loud, you're too loud. Stop, stop, stop. I'm getting overwhelmed. I, I'm getting too stressed. It is this overloading my system. I'm getting out of my window of tolerance. Get away. Hey, my friend. Yeah. Whoa. You know, usually I, you know, I get you. And this time also, I heard you. But that was a lot of cool information, actually. Yeah. So can I, can I just go over it again? Because I was just trying to listen here. Even like a whoa channel army, people who have attended our training, we got this thing like, whoa, maybe we should mm -hmm. repeat. And I'm going also to add something. You say like, when you ask Annabelle from, when we start with anger from an attachment perspective, leaving what well, you just basically said, and tell me if I'm wrong, right? Well, when we look at a baby, we see the protest behavior when he or she says, where are you, where are you, where are you, right? Then we might see anger with a baby or with a little child that's protesting on the basic attachment team. You are not there, right? But we can also imagine protesting on the other one is not there, that we see a little, let's imagine like a three or four year old kid, right? Instead of a baby that makes it more touchable, I guess they can get really angry or they can start to cry. And then we then, instead of showing anger, they show tears. Mm -hmm. So that that is, that's a possibility, right? If you people can follow me a little bit. What you said is there is also anger that comes up when we overwhelm the baby. Okay, when, when things happening are happening where a kid says, this is way too much, right? This is just too much, stop with, with all the things around me. Mm. Yeah. Then we can see with kids that they use anger to let us know, mm. I'm overwhelmed here. Stay at a distance. Mm. Okay. But we can also imagine that the child might start to cry because of the same reason. Mm -hmm. And then you go one step further, like, and especially when they're not only overwhelmed, but they are just harmed in their integrity then you got a very vital mm. uh, anger that says stop this is this is just mm. way across the border right this is what we you refer to as more mm. a primary anger mm. then you might see anger like the Gandalf mm -hmm. but you also can see meltdown or you can also yeah. see a lot of tears or freeze mm -hmm. and here is the big thing that's why I like you inviting us talking about this when we would see the child seeing in tears, we would lean forward and we would look, what's happening here? Oh, you miss your mom, you miss your dad, oh, we got you. Oh, whoa, so when the kids around you are playing too loud, you get overwhelmed, that makes you cry and, and turn away. Oh, we get you. Oh, but when this, when people are saying to you that, that really hurts you in your being, yeah, this now you're devastated. Oh, I hear you. See, mm -hmm. but when people respond with anger, all of a sudden in this world it becomes different. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly why, but people tend to say that's not a, that's kind of behavior you don't show. Mm -hmm. Right, and for me that's really weird. Mm -hmm. We should welcome anger if we try to understand it from an attachment point of view. I love what you're saying and. And you guys help me if I'm kind of understanding you guys correctly too. And, and in my book, I even have a chapter about anger 
because I myself have felt like anger is so misunderstood. And I think that's something that you're kind of speaking to, Jeff, is that it is very misunderstood culturally or, or societally. And and even you're kind of talking about these two parts is like anger as a protector, like here's my boundaries, like back off, you know, as, as Bulby and even Sue talk about the attachment dance between closeness and distance, right? Is, could this be, you know, anger as like advocating, you know, I need more connection. I'm trying to reach, I'm trying to break through. I'm, I'm trying to gain some kind of closeness and, and my anger is helping me come forward. Or is it the anger of back up, back off? I need to feel safe, you know, and, and I've got to push back in some way. And, you know, I think too, what you're saying is the body can, can physiologically display anger in multiple ways, not just like maybe holding a fist or, you know, like clenching down, it can be tears, right? That can also, and anger might very often come with other emotions attached to it, um, depending on what it's advocating for protecting. And I think too, culturally, what people respond to is the behavior and they, they get stuck shutting down anger because of the reactive move, the behavior, and then suddenly anger, the emotion gets, it's like throwing out the baby with the bathwater, right? And anger of an emotion is so important and there's so much meaning and information in it if we have the courage to lean in and understand wow. people get scared by the behavior yeah and that and that makes sense and before we start talking or continue talking about it let's just welcome for a minute that it all makes sense you know especially when anger turns to big anger or aggression it just really makes sense that it scares us okay so and also especially and that's where the, because that's what you wanted right that we include the trauma thinking mm -hmm. okay when people get angry at us let's welcome for a minute that it might be indeed scary to deal with it's, mm -hmm. it's not easy you know tears tears most of the time are not that threatening except if you had a parent mm -hmm. who had for years mental problems and who was never available and cried the whole time then when your client shows really attachment behavior like crying that might become difficult for you as a therapist too yeah, yeah. And, and that's and also, actually okay Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. So tears are sometimes in relationship also uh, dangerous because one of the persons learned from a parent that tears are a way to make you do things you don't want to do. Sometimes mm -hmm. tears are also power, so then you mm -hmm. don't trust the tears anymore. Yeah. Uh, I wanted. Uh, can I jump in with with the baby and the bath water? Mm -hmm. Because the, what does, if we go to trauma, people who sometimes will say, I shame myself that I didn't get angry because my system didn't react and I didn't protect myself. So there is the lack of anger that then becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I defend myself? Why didn't I fight? Why didn't I... <laughs> Why do you try to protect myself? Because anger, when the system is depleted and you go in the freeze zone or you go in a numbing zone, when our bodies tend to be angry, we get energy again. Mm -hmm. And the energy gives us, uh, you know, the word power is, I don't mean power over the other, fuel. it gives us fuel, it gives us fuel to act. Mm -hmm. And it gives us fuel to protect ourselves. That's what mm -hmm. anger does. It it stands there. Mobilizes. Way, it mobilizes energy. Yes. That's what I was looking for. Yes, and which so, is an important survival function. And yes. I think sometimes people forget that attachment is a survival function. Right? It's not a luxury like the old school 
me before they really understood attachment and the brain science used to think it's actually part of survival. So it makes right. sense that when attachment is threatened, it triggers those very primary existential survival feelings and that body mobilizes to say, hey, we need to protect the survival of this relationship of this connection of our integrity. And the survival of the person, like when persons who are deeply depressed, we would try to help them to be angry again. Mm. Because when they get angry, that in anger is their self-worth mm. and the fighting for something and the mobilizing mm. of energy. Mm. So to see anger as something negative, mm. that I think we already clarified it. Anger is is a built-in emotion possibility. So it has its reasons for being mm. there. And it can be primary, secondary, mm -hmm. and it is it has an effect, as Shiv said, and that effect in our culture mm -hmm. is more often, oh, that's not okay, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You just blew my mind, Levin, when you said anger, there's an element of self-worth in anger, right? Yeah. Where anger is saying, I deserve more, you know, I deserve for something to happen. I mean, that's mind-blowing and so beautiful and such a beautiful way to look at it and you know I, I love what you guys are saying too how it can feel scary when you're on the receiving end and this used to be hard I've had an interesting journey with anger myself as a therapist and even as a young child I had angry protest when I didn't feel like I had a voice and it was about wanting to feel like my voice mattered that it counted. And then as an adult, when I first started being a therapist and my clients got angry and it got turned on me, I thought at first, before I understood that this was like the client attacking me until my supervisor, um, wonderful EFT supervisor helped me understand anger and that anger is pain, anger is fear. When you see anger, it's like striking oil or striking gold, there's something valuable there. And they're not really saying, you know, especially if the client gets angry at you, they're not really saying you're worthless or you're not good enough. They're saying, can you really get my pain? Can you really get me in this place? You know, and one of the most liberating things I do as an EFT therapist and our professional ethics always say, walk your talk. You know, so I try to step into the model myself if I feel angry and really try to meet myself in that place and recognize, hey, your anger is saying something good. What is it saying? So I think a lot of times we don't get clear. And as we know, pain demands to be felt and anger is pushing for that. Whatever it is, a message to be heard, to be understood, to be felt. And if we don't even know the name of our pain that the anger is trying to get through, it's harder to be clear. And I found even meeting myself in that place calms me right down. And I can really make clear the legitimacy of my pain or my point and, and have more control over the way that it gets displayed outwardly. Because you also don't want to be stuck doing damage control. That's the only drawback with high dysregulation around anger is then it overshadows our point and then we have to clean up the damage that our behavior might have caused in that place which takes us away from the pain where we need the care right does that does that make sense it makes completely sense yeah mm -hmm. so, so that when we what i hear you say and jeff you help me to follow the rest and that uh, you both you join with both parts of what we said that when we are on the receiving end if we can be shocked and be afraid of the anger but you recognize the anger in yourself and that it was trying to say and that it has a message and that it was a strong line message anger is always trying to do something good for us but sometimes in the relationship, you also said when it sometimes when we feel the pain underlying it, we our anger is less loud, yeah, which makes our message better transparent. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes when we are so angry, we're destructive of others, mm -hmm. then even what he tries to do for us, it gets lost. Okay? It gets lost. Do I like that, what you say? Okay? The, it's, the, the general message is let's be appreciative of any emotion. Every emotion is there for a reason. Yeah. And this, every emotion is there for a reason. Yeah. What were you going to say, Jeff? Mm. Well, I'm trying to let it sink in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing with anger, you know, it always goes so fast, anger. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's one of the things we can do. Yeah. Slow it down. Slow it down a little bit. And I'm like, whoa, Annabelle, that was a lot you said. Mm. And I think you reflected that well. And there's so many layers in anger. Okay, so what I hear you for, and maybe I'm just going to repeat it a little bit, and I don't think that hurts, especially when it goes fast. Yeah. <laughs> like a topic of like this. So there's a thing around anger is something that mobilize, we mobilize the body to express mm -hmm. what we can, where we have difficulties to actually even name the thing that we're feeling mm -hmm. so we got like this vulnerable feelings this this fear this sadness this all of this more primary emotions and we don't know how to express it okay and and you know what maybe the other one that we need when we're afraid or lonely or sad we feel that caregiver or that important person maybe far away if we talk soft, even if we have words and we talk in a soft way, mm -hmm. soft sound doesn't travel far, right? When we feel the other one far away, we, mm -hmm. we need anger, right? We need that it mobilize or so that our message can reach far. Mm -hmm. Or it might really be sound like protesting a hey, guy's why mm -hmm. Okay. So that's one thing around anger. But then you come in with something new that... Anger is not only something within, it's also something in between. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is we see that with couples, right? We know that with couples, of course, that the anger of one partner really is overwhelming for the other one. Mm -hmm. And then the other one withdraws, and then you get no response. Mm -hmm. And I heard you say something around your own journey about my anger, I found out in the good work of a supervisor, which I think mm -hmm. is a good example, Annabelle, you mentioned this here, because Thank you. we all need to work through our own mm -hmm. issues. Could be anger, or could be tears, right? Mm -hmm. But you said something about, I found out my anger could be like, do I have a voice here? Do I matter? Do I belong? Mm -hmm. And then the only way I had, because the other, all the other people felt so far away, Mm. was those angry outbursts kids can have right it's, mm -hmm. from my point of view it just makes sense yeah and then maybe i don't know let's not go too much into detail but let's assume from a society point of view like we often say no we don't like anger but if the anger means do i have a voice here can i be heard and the answer is no what happens then to to us we need to be part of it. And the answer is the only way we have is express it in anger. And the answer is, if you act that way, no, you don't belong. Then we get more isolated. Mm -hmm. Then we get really more isolated. And I think what I'm talking about right now is the developmental trauma that then starts to happen over time. Yes. Where we really start to believe, I'm not worthy. And the other, other people are so far away and they're not helping me co-regulating and co-constructing my inner world. So they don't lend me words. They don't help me with finding words that can travel. Mm. So I'm stuck alone, overwhelmed. And the only thing I have is anger. But people tell me, don't get angry if you mm. want to be part. So I have to suppress all that anger and then mm. it's get like really mm. yeah. bad thing. So here, over time, the anger that has a function in people and has also 
effects within people in relationships that creates, I guess, a shattered sense of self. Mm. Do I belong? Mm. And yeah. when you can, that can happen over time. Yeah. And then we get like the developmental trauma piece, mm. but some big T's, you know, big traumas, they can also destroy all of a sudden that feel, mm. the feeling, the sense of self. You know? mm. I love what you're saying. And this is a good, I think a good entry point to know you know, so sort of what I mentioned before, when I learn to meet myself and even my clients in anger and understand it and validate it, usually the energy shifts and we can have a really meaningful dialogue while still honoring the anger. And it's kind of soothing and co-regulating. However, I have found, and again, I part of it, I think comes from the understanding that, um, well, kind of this idea that I found with clients, the more closer to rage they are, the, the more unprocessed hurt and pain is under the surface. And I've noticed for clients that do, um, when they have that kind of anger, even when I step into it with them and I slow it down and I validate it, they have a really hard time with the co-regulation. Like, like a baby that cannot be soothed, right? Like a client that is so angry and it's like, and to me that signals, okay, this is, ang here's anger, prime example showing up as a trauma, right? Is that even if I step into it with you, like the body just does not know how to feel soothed even when it's getting a voice, even when it's getting the thing that it needs and it's, it's staying in that energy and it's like i can't let you comfort me i can't let this go and so you know in session they may get up and pace back and forth or they may go in and out so if you are in session so bringing it back to this idea of working with anger like you work with trauma when you are with a client that has a lot of rage really really deep um, anger wounds and they struggle with the self-soothing I mean is the answer just to kind of keep chipping it away at it over time like everything else in EFT that even if one percent can be reached right now that one percent can grow gradually I mean what strategies do we have for it, that can, can, can I go again because it is one link with trauma yeah that, that I wonder and maybe it's more a wonder than an answer. Yeah. The, uh, I think in Sue's book, but I'm not sure I read it elsewhere also, that the definition of psychotrauma is an, an attack to your integrity, bodily or, or psychologically, and then the absence of a suiting person mm. to go to. So you are, if you are in a war, you can go back to somebody who understands you. The chance of having PTSD is lower. But if you can't talk to somebody, that's why soldiers need each other in, in a group. That, and then, so you have two elements in trauma. It's something breaking your integrity, like sexual trauma or physical trauma or psychological trauma. And then the absence of a suiting figure, and especially in families, when, for, for instance, the parent is the mm -hmm. perpetrator of the trauma, and the parent is also the one who suits, then mm -hmm. it becomes complicated. Mm -hmm. So you say, maybe rage, you say, which is, I understand, like a very escalated form of anger. Sometimes people cannot be reached. By the suiting of the other, you offer them a relationship. I'm here, I understand you, I understand your pain. But it's difficult to let it in. Mm. Maybe because of the second part of the trauma, the trust relationship has been broken. I cannot trust that you are comforting me because the comforter has been the perpetrator. <laughs> mm. The comforter has been the one mm. that hurt me. Mm. So we have a long way to do in our work with those mm -hmm. clients to build a relationship where they trust that we are to be trusted when we say, mm -hmm. I see that it hurts you. Yeah. yeah. 
we so it's about the relationship that mm. was broken part of the trauma is i don't trust the other anymore mm. i wanted to say that jeff yeah i like it i like it mm-hmm. um that's amazing yeah and again it's it's really a lot can i also yeah i don't want to interrupt i don't want to interrupt if you got a, a amazing nugget so you, you feel free to cut me off if you need to, but leave in you like, again, blowing my mind. And I think the way you said that really captured it and kind of tied it together in, you know, with meeting somebody in the anger. I love how you said, as you put it, like an assault on their integrity. And I've often found that some of my most angry clients and even in self-examination and anger the deepest angry hurt is around feeling like my goodness is not being seen. And and I've seen this in my most angry client. And ironically, without being able to have a sense of empowerment over the expression of anger, the thing we often do kind of further betrays that goodness in ourselves. So it's like, we're angry and hurt because our goodness isn't being seen. But then if we kind of, you know, dysregulate in certain ways that can further make us look like we don't have that goodness, even though we do, right? If we like punch a wall or throw something, you know, um, so we kind of betray our own goodness in that way. And the essence of trauma, right, is that most people with trauma do have a hard time with that co-soothing, that co-regulation, namely can be because either the person who was administering the comfort was also doing the, the criticism or the trauma. So it can be hard to even take in and trust comfort. And some people never had anyone there at all. So they don't even have a template for co-soothing. And it was a really good t- reminder of that second piece to bring the two together is with other parts of obvious trauma that stand out to us like you know, an event or an assault, something like that. I think we already kind of have that expectation of, you know, they're not going to be able to co-soothe well. This is something we're going to have to work on, but we, maybe somehow we can over-assume that somebody with angry trauma is, as soon as we step into it, it's just going to automatically know how to co- co-regulate and they won't. So really attuning our expectations as clinicians right there. Am I getting that right? Yeah, it made me think of just not, I don't want to compare, but the, you know, like ladies in the world, the you, girls, uh, having girls myself, you, you have a daughter, she have, she's 12, you start to worry. But what happens in the streets mm-hmm. uh, when then 20% of women are sexually assaulted somewhere somewhere before the 18 that's one out of five wow if you come home to your mother or your father and the reaction is either mm. where is the bastard i'm going to kill her him mm. or the reaction is what did you do to attract it in both situations there's no suiting mm-hmm. yeah so mm. then you feel I try to protect my integrity. I come to you for comfort, but mm-hmm. I don't get comfort because I get you being angry to the attacker or I get you being criticizing of me from mm-hmm. your fear. And we understand that parent, of course, but in the child position and being traumatized, you're alone now. Yeah, so the trust goes down. Can I expose my pain to you? And can I be seated? as of trusting the other image of other changes and the world you can get treated. so i was thinking of that just not to go to the war and big things but just do things that happen a million times in our world everywhere yeah and then and yeah it's a... where i am is uh, not in the world uh, but in my office all of a sudden hearing you talk it brings me back to my office like okay so what is it then like the rage and the way we conceptualize it here how we can understand it and how that leads to when it comes from a place with deep loneliness actually like the other one is not be trusted in 
when I wasn't in need, they were not there and all the things you've said. And conceptualizing rage as unprocessed pain and hurt where nobody was there and nobody co-regulated you, mm. then we keep on thinking as rage as an unprocessed pain and hurt. Mm. So if we think there is a risk here, thinking and constructing it that way, because there is a there is a motion in it, which is actually sometimes dangerous in EFT, because rage and anger is like really difficult. So it's way more easy to say and to go for, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's unprocessed pain and hurt. So go for the pain and hurt. Mm -hmm. Go for that one. Reflect that one. Go for what's lying underneath. But with some of those people that felt like, but you know what? You want to enter my world? You want to co-regulate my rage? You want to co-construct what's underneath? Then I have to let you in. But that's actually the main reason of my rage is that there was nobody there helping me. So this is a totally new threatening experience mm. where people can get also really mm. scared from what is happening and then they will use rage again to protect mm. themselves from us mm. leaning in with secure attachment basically mm. because it's so new mm. and so what i think is a really important thing when it comes to anger and rage and even aggression is to stay there at first mm. and reflect upon what it means relationally mm -hmm. i think that is really important if we if we want to if we think about rage and anger and aggression as it's just underlying there are these primary emotions, there is the pain, the fear, the hurt, then we go in, right? And what you're talking about, Levin, it makes me realize like, oh, but that's why we don't have we don't have to go too fast. We have yeah. to go slow and stay with that anger. Mm -hmm. And not only just staying with it, but re reframing and what does it actually in a relationship mean? And it could mean a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Similar to the violence work, it could mean like, I need you. I need you. I'm shouting at you that I need you. Actually, I shout at you that you really have to mm -hmm. come in and co-regulate me. But, but the moment that you come in, I get scared, so I won't allow. So the only thing I can do is shout and get angry. Mm. That's the whole ambivalent attachment mm. strategy. Mm -hmm. I so think that's beautiful. Go, keep going. Mm. Yeah, we have to, if we wanna, if we wanna stay with it and work with it, we have to reflect it in that way, what it means mm. in the relationship. And yeah, before we can just be there with people and that makes as we talk about it sometimes and even like working with ang anger and, and aggression is like something what we do is like the no change thing mm -hmm. be with it without trying to flip Good. it to some more primary stuff right. and if we stay with it right then we're in a place where people say mm -hmm. you're staying with me now you're closed but you're not trying to enter you're not trying to force they don't try to force it and then we have like a distance or a closeness mm -hmm. where we can find the balance. How can we together mm -hmm. be here with your anger? Yeah. And what does it mean? And then, yeah, then something yes. starts to happen. I, can I first tell about it? Just re gem alarm, Jeff. Yeah, I want, I want to learn this line by heart. So first, we have to understand rage in the relationship. And I hear you mean in this relationship. Right in now, the, right. Here and this, now, yeah. right now, with me, the therapist, with this family member. In this, you're saying something now, and it makes sense now. Mm -hmm. And then you say this line, I, Annabelle will make a beautiful meme out of it, because she can do that. Yeah. Because coming too close, Mm -hmm. is endangering because I don't trust. So I get fearful, I get more angry. Mm -hmm. But I'm shouting because I want you closer. Mm -hmm. And the right distance is st standing with anger, close but not trying to enter, mm -hmm. you said, Jeff. I think that's a beautiful line. That is the correct distance for the moment. Mm 
mm. close with the anger, but not trying to enter into primary emotions because that's too soon, too early. Yeah. <laughs> so that the only I'm, person can feel you're with me. You're yeah. with me. Yeah. You're with me and you accept the fact that I'm angry. If I learn yeah. something in working with anger is that we mm. anger needs a relationship yeah. and acceptation before it can be reflected, before it can be deepened and validated. Mm. I love that. So anger needs a relationship. It needs acceptance before we can reflect and validate it. Yeah. Wow. And how to master that <laughs> sounds like some high tech ninja moves right there. Well, and basically, basically the last three parts, we are just well trained in EFT in yeah. how to reflect and yeah. with the evocative responding and deepening. And so, and then seeing what's on the light on the <laughs> flying underneath and then we can validate it. Yeah. And let me clarify too, something <laughs> that I said about um, seeing anger as pain. And I get sometimes in EFT, we can be guilty of trying to overshoot the emotion in front of us in, in almost like a misattunement and not being with what's in front of us and trying to go deeper into something else. And they're saying, no, I need you to see my anger. When I say basically the main purpose of recognizing anger as pain and fear was something that helped me not get triggered as the therapist by the anger and be able to stay with it because I recognized this person is not trying to, they're not bad, they're not um, evil, they're not pathological, like some of our field would say, you know, this person is in pain and they need me to be able to be present with them right here and meet them in this place. And that helped me just hold that frame of empathy so I could meet them in their anger. Wow. And I, yeah. I love what you're saying too about sort of like negotiating the stance because I think in, in trauma, a lot of it is this felt sense of like a loss of power or loss of control, um, not feeling like they have the power within to if I want to let you in, I want to let you in. If I don't want to let you in, I don't want to let you in. So kind of honoring that in the trauma that I see you and accept that, you know, again, if you've not had safety before, that can be disorienting because it's new. Safe, safety and, and relationship can be disorienting and a trigger for your nervous system, like discombobulating, or we call yeah. disorganizing. So so that that means to make a little bit more daily talk in our office right mm -hmm. what you say that if we would put it in words in a reflection that would sound like it would make a hell of a lot of sense that you start to, to shout at me or that you start shouting at him here or that, that you feel like no that you get agitated and hypervigilant it just really makes sense mm -hmm. right because if I just ask you, hey, how does it make you feel? What's happening inside? What is that? You may you get angry. What happens inside? Then it gets even worse, right? Because probably what you're angry is saying right now. You ask me and I was my whole life alone and I, there's nobody did this with me. Nobody did this, right? Okay, so me trying to ask you let me in let me in why would you yeah why would you right because nobody was there right and so your anger here is telling me back off right it says back off i can trust it i can trust this is that it and then people will say yeah okay mm. right and that's okay and then that, that, that acceptance that's okay if that happens here. You can you can be angry here. It's okay for you to say nobody was there. Don't be so soft on me. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. And then you can say like, people will calm down. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but that's actually sad. So the, the sadness is is in within the, within the relational drama. Mm -hmm. If, and if we can see that, reflect that, accept that, that anger is an answer to that, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. people will start feeling you know in that first layer at the outside you get me you're with me you're not pushing me you're not yeah i can i can be a little bit in control in how much i let you in mm -hmm. that's so beautiful and again a really good reminder because i think if we get too proactive or too gung-ho in trying to go into the emotion it's like we're forcing our way in and that can almost reinforce the trauma right where they're saying i need to feel safe i need to know that i can say what's okay and not okay for for me and that another human being can can accept that and be okay with that and not not make it worse and then the more that i can start to have that experience and trust it the easier it is i don't have to keep pushing with such force and maybe i can slowly let you in because there's this trust like we were rehabilitating that trust that i know that you're going to respect me in this place and if i say not okay i no longer need to use rage or such energy to get you to hear me because we've had that success yeah. there and i can always hear use my anger to let you know that was one step too far mm -hmm. too close because mm -hmm. you accept that and you know what it means from a relational perspective mm -hmm. i think that is so key and once people feel and trust you in you can read anger not only within but you can you can read my anger what it means in a relationship mm -hmm. once they trust you on that then especially with trauma people mm -hmm. they all of a sudden can let you in really deep mm -hmm. uh, because we're talking about going slow going slow mm -hmm. but once that they see you and trust you like you accept my anger you can read it mm -hmm. you put words to what it means relationally so i can use it here in my office so you won't abandon me you won't you won't tell me we don't allow that here mm -hmm. once start once people feel that they're like okay I'm, I'm, I can show you pieces. And the moment you ask one question too much, mm -hmm. I will get angry at you and you will understand it. That's the safety that happens. Mm. Yeah. And that, that, that Annabelle, you said something beautiful about that uh, 10 minutes ago, and that can only happen. We have to do our work on our own, mm -hmm. being triggered by anger of others, because every one of us has fearful reactions to anger. Mm -hmm. So when we're in the professional stance, we still sometimes will have the we will have this automatic reaction. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And then we are in fear and we cannot be empathic anymore. So we have mm -hmm. to work on that and even sometimes it's close it to our patients. Oh sorry, but I, I I reacted because I was fearful and uh, can I tell you what happened to me and be a human being with you and you know, that I'm not God. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I get afraid, and then then I get. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you did, but it takes a long time to work on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it takes a lot of courage to go inside, and you know, with a lot of therapists that I supervise, you know, again, anger can be another place they get triggered, and I say, let's let's explore your relationship with anger right? And, and even with the clients, right? Sort of also for the person who's on the receiving end of anger, you know, whether it's us, a therapist, or maybe a partner is building that window of tolerance. And again, it's not the same as saying it's okay for someone to be intentionally hurtful or cruel or violent. That's not the same thing. It's saying, you know, especially someone does try to have health in their anger and express anger in a more healthy way. It's also, can I hold space and tolerate that someone is communicating pain through the emotion of anger and be willing to stay with them long enough to hear what's happening and we work together rather than just instantly, as soon as anger comes online, I shut it down and say, that's not acceptable. That's not okay. And we don't make space or room for this very valid human emotion that's in all of us you know mm -hmm. anger as an emotion in and of itself is not bad no you know what um what often happens and this is 
you know, this game moves me because I've seen so many clients as you are even suffering mm. on their anger, you know, and what is so painful for them is how they really felt abandoned as so many times that they asked for help, help me with my anger. And I leaned in in the relationship and I asked for help. And the answer was that people backed away, over overruled me mm. and not accepted mm. that my anger was there. Mm. And that is really, again, not belonging. So people end up really being ashamed and alone. Mm. And it's a simple image, you know, but what we often do with, because of, with all, and we have to be so kind to it, you know, because we all got our history, but that's the importance why we need to work on our own relationship with anger as a therapist or with tears or with shame or with aggression, you know, all the things that can trigger us mm -hmm. is that when it comes to anger is what clients tell us is I so I was like a baby crying for food. And people all the time said to me, if you can ask in a decent way, like a five-year-old, that you're just hungry and that you need food, then we will help you. But if you cry, no, we, we won't pick you up. Yeah, because that's basically, especially in trauma, what happens, right? It's especially the, the, the developmental trauma. Mm. They're just not being helped in the co-regulation and being able to give words around what they need and what they feel so they're just like a baby the only thing that they can do is express it in a loud way mm -hmm. so maybe we just were so kind we pick it up and say like oh yeah that's what happens mm -hmm. you want to tell daddy and mommy that you're hungry or mm -hmm. see that movement of leaning in mm -hmm in the hypervigilance and say like, okay, this is what it means, right? Okay, welcome, here you are, I am here. Mm -hmm. We don't do that with anger. We don't do that with aggression. Mm -hmm. That's so it's true. Sad. It does, it does suck. <laughs> and, uh, and I think a key point that you said in there too is sometimes people get punished for having pain and that can feel very traumatizing you know, and, and that's so unfortunate. And so before we kind of move to, to wrapping up, um, if there's somebody, because I've had actually uh, the general public uh, view some of my videos and they say, oh, EFT is definitely for me. So if they happen to be a non-therapist who's made their way to this video and they're struggling with anger, what might you say to somebody watching who maybe wants to understand their anger better. Welcome. I think the first thing we want you to hear, if you're that person, welcome. You're so courageous to be on this channel and to be looking for what your anger might mean. Welcome. And first of all, welcome. We hope you welcome your anger too, because it's trying to do something good for you. It has been your survival. It is helping you to survive. So we have to look, you, maybe you can talk to somebody to find, because on your own, it's difficult to find that. So we can talk to somebody who wants to listen and together with you can look, hey, welcome to the anger and welcome to your courage of seeking a way, an other language to express the same need. So then you have to find the need underneath the anger. What is the anger protecting you or from? Yeah. What is it saying to you? What is it saying about your life? I think that's the first lines I always <laughs> think of it, of this. But maybe Jeff has another. You have another, yeah. yeah. Well, I would have said, welcome. Yeah. I think that's really the most important thing that we welcome anger that we are letting people feel we're not going to overrule you and saying that anger is bad we're not going to lecture you 
and we're not going to we're going we're not going to try to overrule you or lecture you we are not going to try to back away from your anger what we want is if you suffer from your own anger please feel welcome please feel welcome and let's together together take a look at what it means inside you and in your relationships that do matter to you and let's see how we can find the way of welcoming your anger so that you can look at it as oh yeah but that is how it helped me survive in life uh, so that you don't get stuck in a place that you don't try to be angry because that is when anger anger gets a fixed problem when we don't allow ourselves to be angry because we need angry uh, anger we need it mm. Mm. and not allowing your anger then it's a heavy burden mm. i wonder how many therapists who will be watching this will kind of feel what i feel right now it's just to have validation and anger feels so soothing for my nervous system right as you know as i as i kind of opened up before at the beginning of this episode is i feel like anger is so misunderstood right and it gets a bad rap and there's so much information contained in it that's important that's powerful that's meaningful that's beautiful and to as a therapist to let herself stretch and grow to not be afraid of it and to step inside of it you know and step inside our own and and say hey you know there might actually be a really good reason that you're angry let's see if we can find out what that good reason is <laughs> you know mm. feels so good you know and ironically it's like if my anger needs this energy to fight to be heard and you hear it then suddenly my body doesn't always feel like i need as much energy to fight to be heard and that's pretty amazing that's awesome all right you guys any last nuggets of wisdom before we um have you guys let everyone know where they can find you for me i'm feel like outspoken if no no bubbles coming up for the moment mm. no just if people want to reach us they can do that on the mm. eft belgium website mm. and there they can find an email and mm. that's the way you can reach us both mm -hmm. i don't know how to say that leaving it's uh, eft how does it call a thing in english the streep oh, like a like a dash is it a dash I don't know. Yeah. Like a line Which, in the middle. A line, a line yeah. in the middle. So the dash. The dash. EFT-Belgium.org. Okay. And I will make sure that I get the link and put it in the description for this video on YouTube. If you're listening on podcast form, you'll just have to rewind and write it down. <laughs> but you guys are also going to be coming to Vegas in 2024 in the spring. And we will be doing a whole workshop either two or three days i can't remember how many days but it's going to be awesome um around working with anger as a form of trauma and i really look forward to that and i hope you guys felt very touched by jeff and levin and what they've shared today i think it's amazing for two guys that work with violence and aggression and really intense anger for both of you to have such an enormously calm presence it's like wow, you know, like the lighthouse in a storm, you know, which Thank is you. awesome. Yeah. And do you, so you guys have also published a paper on using um, EFT with violence in relationships. Um, is there a place where people can find that? I think yes. yeah, if you go to the family process website, and you put in our names or you uh, search for 
uh, EFT and intimate partner violence a roadmap to de-escalation I think it's called um, they will find the description of a whole stage one work that we do with a couple that suffers from aggression in their relationship mm -hmm. and where we explain our basic uh, understanding of aggression which is mm -hmm. actually um, what happens in a relationship where a lot of anger is suppressed and anyway you should look into that what it means from an attachment point of view, of view violence and aggression that's amazing and so eft belgium there's a, the family process is where they can find your article or they can google eft and inner partner violence so we'll make sure that we that i'm going to track it down and find that link so i can also put that in the video so everyone can read your article i think it's very very important and hopefully you guys will come visit jeff and Levin in the states and uh, attend their workshop because it's going to be amazing. So we're super excited to have them and uh, reach out to them on their website, give them an email, give them a thumbs up, hopefully thank them for their wisdom and, you know, maybe invite them to your area to do a workshop or a training on anger or violence. Um, they're, they're really amazing. And uh, I've certainly learned a lot about how to be a great therapist in general, in addition to working with anger and violence. So I can't say anything more high and, and wonderful about these two guys. So make sure you guys check them out. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Thanks for hanging in there with us as we talked about this really deep and, and kind of heavy topic. And I hope that you really enjoyed it. Thank you both for spending time with us today. I know it's late over on your side of the world. So we'll let you guys get to your uh, evening bedtime. But thank you to all of our viewers and make sure that you check out the resources, check out my book. And it my book is a very much a self of a therapist book, helping you explore your own relationship to different kinds of emotions and challenging clients and um, anger is in there. So it's just a good way for therapists to work on themselves and uh, make sure that you hit subscribe because more videos are on the way. Don't forget to buy my book, Using Relentless Empathy in the Therapeutic Relationship, Connecting with Challenging and Resistant Clients for Helping Professionals, available on Amazon or on my website, www.drbugatti.com.